My name is Lisa Marzullo. I was diagnosed with stage two invasive ductal carcinoma on Christmas Eve. In October, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and I was home taking care of her and I started to feel a little bit of pain in my arm and uh, it wasn't going away so I went to the doctor and I got diagnosed officially on Christmas Eve right as I was on my way to go celebrate the holidays with my family. I can only imagine what the feeling is knowing that your daughter has cancer. For me, you know, I'm also staying strong for myself but I had to stay strong for her too. Noah Syndergaard sent out a tweet that said, um, I'm on the tarmac, I'm gonna do a Q&A, and I tweeted back a few hours later, hey, I am at Memorial Sloan if you want to come to treatment with me, and if not, I'll be at game two of the home series, you know, with bells on. A few minutes later, the Mets, you guys tweeted me back and were offering to send me some swag, and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, how generous. A couple days later, uh, you reached back out to me on direct message and said, actually, why don't you come to the stadium? And I was just like, what? So, here I am. <laughs>My dad's from Queens, born and raised in Queens, and when they moved to Connecticut, he was stayed a Mets fan, so my brother and I grew up Mets fans. So being here today is like the cherry on top of a fandom cake. I met Mickey Calloway, Brody Van Wagenen, Pete Alonzo, JD, and everywhere I looked, I was just like, I can't even believe that I'm standing here right now. You guys are really hooking me up. I went to school pretty close to the stadium, so we used to come out to games a lot when we were in college, and uh, I've had season tickets with a group of friends for a few seasons, and we would draft out our games, and we'd all come, and I actually also had the opportunity, just out of luck, to come to Game 3 of the 2015 World Series, so I consider myself a huge fan. There's a blanket at my desk. I watched Game 1 on my dual screen at my office. Through everything that's been going on, this has been a bright spot for sure. I got this hat for my birthday from a friend and he didn't really think anything of it when he got it for me. He just thought, oh, it's the winter, your birthday's in the winter, here's a winter hat. And um, under this hat, I'm very bald and the hat has literally been on my head 24-7. I'm glad that my hat is what brought me here in a way from my tweet. And like I said, the support of this team has been amazing and I'm a super fan of the Mets, so I wear the hat proudly. Life is something that you can't take for granted and the only way to really attack this is to attack it as headstrong and positive as I can. It's really been like an amazing support system and I think the biggest thing with this process is that you need that. I've had all of my friends and family that have come out with me to every single chemo treatment so far. I have my husband with me at every treatment and in the most recent ones they give me a really high dose of Benadryl and I just fall asleep and so it's nice that there's somebody there <laughs> to like watch after me while I'm sleeping. You need to make sure you're in high spirits and doing everything that you can to not let this weigh you down. And I think that I've been doing that pretty well so far, but I wouldn't be able to do it without everybody that has been supporting me. I think the biggest thing is that life comes at you fast and you can't prepare for things and you just have to be willing to roll with the punches as best as you can during stuff like this so that you come out stronger on the other side. I still can't believe this all happened from just a tweet. Being here with the Mets, I am just so grateful for this opportunity. I, I'm just so grateful to this team and, and to the support that you guys have shown me as a fan and someone who's really been a fan for my entire life. So I'm just really happy to be here. Let's go Mets! <laughs>